Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about Metco, which is a, a tool that we developed um, in Switzerland. This joint work between EPFL, which is the Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, and the University Hospital, uh, of which I'm part, uh, the SHU. So actually, this, this work builds on top of uh, uh, some of the software pushed forward by the foundation, notably I2B2 and the Picture API. So uh, before diving to the description of the software, I wanted just to explain you a little bit the, the context in which we are planning to use this software, which is the Swiss Personalized mm -hmm. Network Initiative, that is the Precision Medicine Initiative uh, on, currently ongoing in Switzerland. And also the, the, the data protection for personalized health project, which is the project underpinning the development of Medco. And then uh, talk, I would like to talk to you about a few use cases we are envisioning where Medco could, uh, could really contribute. And then I, I conclude and, and uh, give an outlook about the potential next steps. So like in a few years ago, the Swiss federal government decided to allocate a substantial funding for, for the size of the country for the precision medicine program in, um, that goes under the name of SPHN, so the Swiss Personal Health Network. And uh, in, in parallel, also the, the two federal institutes of technologies, so ETH in Zurich and EPFL in Lausanne decided to also allocate substantial funding uh, to, to be a companion project so that uh, essentially, uh, both the university hospital and university and the Federal Institute of Technology could participate in this in this endeavor. So the the whole goal of SPHN is actually to build a technology infrastructure to enable uh, sharing interoperable data at a nationwide scale. Uh, and by nationwide, I mean the the scale of Switzerland, which is pretty small, but still it's it's an entire country, and. Uh, so, so basically, SPHN organizes itself as, as a network of interoperable nodes. So we have, we have clinical sites, and then we have these this, uh, regional data nodes, uh, biomed, re biomed IT regional data nodes that are high performance computing infrastructure that are maintained by academic institution. You can see them as, as private clouds, where basically hospital will uh, outsource uh, the, their data and then um, researchers will leverage this uh, this uh, IT infrastructure to uh, perform uh, uh, federated queries and, and uh, federated analysis on the data. So each hospital has received substantial funding to develop uh, clinical research data warehouses to work on semantic interoperability and uh, to, to build secure infrastructures and uh, come up with uh, interoperable workflows from the bioinformatics and data analytics point of view. So this is all ongoing activities. And of course, the main challenges that you that we all know are about ethical and legal and social implication, because when it's about data sharing, we, we, we fall into these problems. Semantic interoperability, of course, uh, in Switzerland, we have like uh, 26 cantons, each of them uh, with a different uh, EHR system. And in the country, we speak uh, three different languages. So, so the interoperability challenge is, uh, is quite important. And, and also, okay, the, the big data dimension, because we don't only want to share clinical data, but also genomic data. So we, we got into the, the big data dimension. And last but not least, um, security and data privacy. It's, it's one of the big issues. And, and this is what I would like to, to focus on today. So in this framework, the data protection and personalized project is is, one, is the only project in Switzerland funded by, by uh, SPHN and PHRT for, for three years that is focusing on addressing the privacy and, um, and security challenges, both from the technological point of view and from the ethical and legal aspects. So uh, the consortium is made uh, essentially by, by computer scientists from EPFL and, uh, and ETH, the Swiss Data Science Center, and also from medical uh, partners from, uh, from the Lausanne University Hospital and uh, LC expert from, from also ETH. And the goals are to address the main privacy and security challenges for personalized medicine and to define the optimal balance between usability, scalability, and, and data protection. So the vision is to deploy like an infrastructure 
that will be deployed at these uh, Biomed IT regional data nodes. And this infrastructure will allow basically researchers to uh, run the typical research clinic, uh, clinical research cycles. So from the feasibility study to 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 real uh, federated learning and and uh, and uh, advanced uh, statistics analysis on the data in a platform that is uh, uh, privacy preserving and that also relies on advanced privacy preserving technologies. And I will come to that in a minute. Um, and also will rely on, on the, the notion of private blockchains uh, where all the uh, actions performed in the federation will be logged in an immutable way to uh, facilitate reproducibility, auditability and traceability. So in the first here, we are aiming at a small prototype of a, of a first tool that is Matco that I, I, I'm going to describe in a few in a few minutes. And in the second and third year, a more nationwide deployment of this infrastructure that won't only cover um, cohort exploration, but really uh, federated uh, uh, machine learning. So Matco uh, is, is the first operational tool that is addressing a cohort discovery of both genomic and, uh, and uh, clinical data. And just to give you a little bit of motivation of why we believe um, it's important. So essentially to share data, there are two typical approaches. So there's the centralized approach where there's one single repository where all the hospitals push data to. This is like um, initiatives like Genomics England or, or the All of Us Research Program are an example of this. Um, but this, from a, from a security point of view, uh, introduces a single point of failure because if the repository is compromised, then all the data can be leaked. And also there are often legal and ethical and social constraints from hospitals to outsource data to a single repository. So the alternative approach is like a fully decentralized approach. This is typical of uh, PCORnet or ACT Network, uh, but this also introduces high cost. So it's, it's not very scalable when the number of sites uh, increases um, because like all the, all the clinical sites have to organize themselves to keep a, a network ongoing. So the approach uh, adopted by, by SPHN in Switzerland is a semi-decentralized approach. So I, I talked to you about these regional data nodes, these biomedity nodes that you can see them as like uh, private cloud providers where some of the hospital might or, 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 or not outsource part of their data. And of course, when, when, you, when, you, when a hospital needs to outsource data to, to a potentially untrusted party, here is where the privacy and security concerns comes. So, so I want to. Uh, so, the problem we 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 are trying to address is how can we enable clinical sites to securely outsource the storage of their data to some external service provider, uh, and still enable uh, cohort discovery so that uh, patient, patient privacy is, is preserved. So, so if we if we zoom in a little bit into into the architecture, so what happens is that like uh, here you have a clinical site with a source EHR system, and what what we are building in Switzerland is that all the Swiss hospital will build a clinical data warehouse internally, well, da where data from the EHR system will be centralized, and then this data will be pushed to, uh, uh, let's say, essentially what, what we call a cohort exploration database that will be stored on one of these uh, storage and processing units. So I, I named that uh, SPU. And, and one of the requirements is the data that goes out from the hospital needs to be protected. So the standard way to do this is to de-identify the data. But of course, the problem is that when you, when you jump into the omics dimension, the identification is not effective anymore. So there has been a number of papers showing that it's fairly easy to re-identify anonymous genomic data. And the last paper came out last week showing that you can predict uh, DNA 3D, uh, from DNA the 3D shape of a face and then uh, the, the matching with a, a Facebook profile can be the next step. So how do we do? So the, the proposal of the DPPH project, so the Data Protection Personalized Health Project is to rely on uh, so-called uh, advanced privacy-nessing technologies like homomorphic encryption, 
which is a, a special type of encryption that um, allows you to compute directly on encrypted data. So as opposed to standard encryption that, when, that requires you to decrypt the data whenever you need to use it, homomorphic encryption essentially enables you to do some computations on the encrypted data. Other technology we are relying on are uh, secure multi-party computation that enables to decentralize trust across multiple actors. So you don't need to trust a single authority for uh, the security of your system. Also the notion of differential privacy. Differential privacy guarantees that you can quantify and mitigate the risk of uh, re-identification when you release some data. And also the notion of private blockchain which has nothing to do with privacy, but it's a way to uh, immutably log actions performed in the system to provide uh, traceability. So basically, we came up with Metco by combining, so we didn't reinvent the wheel, so we combined the best of both worlds. So uh, coming from the um, information security, we developed Unlinks, which is a privacy-preserving computing framework that enables to do computations on homomorphic encrypted data. And we combine this with the I2B2, the picture API, and, uh, and the, the Gloinberg, which is, uh, which is the user interface uh, for, for Transmart developed by the Hive. And essentially how, how a deployment of Metco looks like. So we have a component which we call Metco ETL, which is a component that allows you to encrypt data uh, at the hospital and store the encrypted data directly in the I2B2 data model. So we, we, we don't touch at the I2B2 core data model. So if you have your data in your clinical data route store in I2B2 data model, then you can use Metco right away. And then basically we deploy I2B2 and, and the picture API, uh, which is our serves as our technical interoperability layer and, and a, an additional service that we call the Metco service, which enables all these uh, computations in the encrypted space. So basically, all the data that is stored on the cloud is always encrypted and uh, the, the cloud can, can see anything about the individual records of its patient. Um, so we try to, to measure performance. So there, there, there's some um, uh, artifact in the slide. So, but essentially we try to measure uh, what would be the overhead of adding homomorphic encryption on top of I2B2, and we compared um, Metco, the performance of Metco with uh, the performance of uh, the Vanilla I2B2 Shrine installation, and the overhead is almost negligible uh, and doesn't depend on the amount of data that you store, but essentially depends on, uh, on the size of your query. And we, we tried on, on data from the Cancer Genome Atlas on, the, on a simple query that I will show you in this demo. So, so basically what happens is that the researcher can get access to the um, <clears throat> Gloinberg user interface. So this is, I don't know if you're familiar with this, with it, but it's very similar to the, the I2B2 user interface. So on the left hand side, you have like uh, the ontology browser. So here we loaded the cancer genome atlas data. So we have molecular data, so genomic data mutations and some, some phenotypic data as well. So here we are looking for patients with uh, um, cancer melanoma uh, across three sites. So the query gets encrypted on the web browser. It is sent to all the clouds provider, executed directly on encrypted data and sent back. And then you, we can refine the query by adding some um, genetic attributes. So for example, here, we're looking for patients with melanoma and at least a mutation in the BRAF gene. Um, and uh, uh, such a mutation should affect the protein at, at a given position. And then we're able to, to run it. And in a, in a, in a matter of a few seconds, uh, as I said, the query gets encrypted. So the cloud don't even see the query. Uh, they run it on encrypted data so they, they cannot see anything the results get back in the web client and gets decrypted uh, for visualization. So the, the user experience is completely transparent uh, with respect to, to the cryptography. And, uh, and you can basically have the same functionality you would have in Shrine with uh, the added value of the encryption. All right, so, so just to summarize, the, the main functionalities are the same we have in, in Vanilla I2B2, so you can query any type of data, including genomic data uh, with any combination of and or. 
And then from the security privacy point of view, you have this end-to-end uh, -end encryption protection. You don't have single point of failure for the management of keys. And uh, only the researcher is the one that can get the end result. We also have differential privacy, so we can obfuscate the results of the query to prevent re-identification. We have this concept of privacy budget, so uh, you can do as many queries as you have budget. Um, and then we, we log everything on a, on a private blockchain that can only be seen by the, the hospitals um, running the system. So we have a website, the code is uh, free online, it's not completely open source. Uh, for academic use, it's open source. For, for commercial use, um, we were happy to discuss for, for licensing. So on the website, you can find, find all the documentation all the code is dockerized, so you can you can almost run it uh, in 60 seconds, as, as Kavi showed before. Um, and we have a project um, that is um, that is uh, aiming at bringing uh, the this academic prototype to a fully operational version in uh, almost 18 months, and this involves a deployment in uh, three of the university hospitals in, in Switzerland. Uh, so we have uh, Lausanne, Geneva, and, and Bern. So the, the so we are also working with oncologists. Uh, so in in the Swiss Personalized Health Network, there's a project called Swiss Personalized Oncology uh, that is um, aiming at harmonizing the collection of uh, oncology-related data across across uh, the nation. And we're coming up with this concept concept of minimal data set where we have data demographic data about patients, diagnosis, uh, tumor staging, uh, molecular profiles. And actually, the idea is to uh, store this uh, through Medco in a secure way in the cloud, and then basically allow investigators uh, to do either uh, selection of cohorts of sub cohorts for our particular research studies, or more in a clinical use case. There's this concept of a molecular tumor board where oncologists from the different hospitals meet on a regular basis and discuss like rare cases, and then they would use Medco as a tool to, to get patients with uh, the same molecular profile um, with respect to the one they're evaluating and get like uh, the treatment lines uh, that are most used, the survival curves, and this kind of information to support uh, their, their decision. So the next steps, as I anticipated before, is to go then from the medical discovery to really the medical analysis. So we are already able to uh, train a uh, linear and logistic regression model on uh, encrypted data directly. So the goal is to extend this to neural networks. Um, so we, we aim to come with some results. This is a very hot topic in the information security community. There's plenty of group working on this. Um, so hopefully there's going to be some uh, uh, nice prototype in a few months. Uh, so to conclude, um, I hope I have convinced you that like advanced privacy preserving technology can facilitate the access and sharing of data uh, when uh, when we want to, especially when we want to outsource the storage of this data to untrusted uh, provider. Um, Medco is uh, probably, as far as I know, the first operational tool uh, that addresses a feasibility study in this context. And uh, as I said, it's kind of easy to adopt if you already have an I2B2 installation and you want to build an, a secure network, you can download and test Medco. And, uh, it's going to be part of the community uh, I2B2 community projects. So you can check on the I2B2 community website regularly about updates or directly on the medco.epfl.ch websites for uh, to see the code and everything else. So I want to acknowledge uh, um, my collaborators. So we have a number of hospitals that are uh, partnering with us to, to work with us on these topics and uh, all the development team at, at EPFL that has done a great job. Thank you. Yep. We don't provide any, yeah, any deduplication uh, 
you know solving solving tool but it's it's uh, it's more like you encrypt your data you store it in the i2b2 data model and then you can run you can run shrine queries on top of on top of it yeah we are using we are using elgamal on an analytic curve that have like additively homomorphic properties Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>